Hey there guys, welcome back to Matter Down Under. For today we're doing a Commander deck tech on the new Omnath Locus of the Royal from Core Set 2020. So Omnath is now in three colours, where green, blue, red, at a total of four mana, a 3-3, three, three, with a very interesting design. So the first part of Omnath is when Omnath enters the battlefield, it deals damage to any target equal number of elementals you control. So clearly elemental tribal right out the gate. The next part is whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target elemental you control, if you control eight or more lands, draw a card. So like two parts to that section. It's all about 1-1 one, one buffs with landfall, and if you race up to eight lands, and then every land after that, you get to draw a card. That's a great draw engine built in there. So it's a simple deck. Every creature, majority of the creatures are elemental to support the elemental theme. Um, we have a lot of buffing effects, mainly with 1-1 one, one counters, and we have a strong draw engine through our commander that we want to reinforce. So looking at the like history of Omnath, every iteration has gained a new colour. You have the Locus of Mana, which is mono green all the way back in Zendikar. Then we saw Omnath return in the Battle of Zendikar, which gained another colour of red, being the Rage. And now Omnath, I guess, is wiser, and now it's gained blue as an extra colour. Pretty cool. Um, out of the other Omnath, we do run the Locus of Rage, because that hate on elemental removal is really strong in this deck. Plus that landfall, making 5-5 beaters is pretty good. A couple cards about our game plan, I've gone with Pure and Hardened Scales. Both these work really well in the deck. I've gone with them over doubling season because most of the counters in the deck are gained at 1-1 increments, even for the Planeswalkers where Pier can do some work. So these are a little bit more budget friendly than the $50 doubling season. So into the meat of the deck, the elementals. There are a couple elemental lord-like cards. You've got the new Creeping Trail Blazer, which is a 2-2 for 2, which buffs the other elementals. But in addition, you can pay for to buff the equal number of elementals you control. In this deck, that can be quite a few, so for 4 mana, you can really start to ramp up. The Soul Stoke here buffs all elementals, and you can cheat an elemental from your hand onto the battlefield with haste and fling it into your opponent, and then it has to die in a turn, of course. This is great to cheat in what you call your clapper elementals, your big high end, like when these ones enter the board, that's you trying to finish it. Master of the Waves himself is not an elemental, but the fact that he brings an army with him and buffs all elementals is really handy. Um, more utility elementals, Fertilid is a god tier elemental in this deck. He has a little 3 mana 2 2, or well, he has 2 counters on him. But you can pay two mana, remove a counter, target player searches the library for basic land, puts into play tapped. With Omnath, every landfall, you can put a counter on target elemental. So, Fertilid gets you a land, you put the counter from Omnath onto Fertilid, then you remove it again and again and again, and you just keep cycling through. Fertilid Omnath, great combo. Chandra's Ember Cat and Smoke Braider here, both just tap mana for elementals, but the Ember Cat can also produce mana for Chandra Planeswalkers, which we do run two of in the deck. Banneret is a reduction spell for all our elementals, which is nice. Flankin Harbinger is a great tutor spell. You can get any elemental at your deck, put it on top. Um, getting expensive though, nearly a $10 on common now. The brand new Risen Reef from Corset 2020. This does some work. So it's 3 mana 1 1. But whenever another elemental enters the battlefield, or itself, you reveal the top card of your library, or you may look at it. If it's a land, you may put it on the battlefield tap. If you don't, put that card on the battlefield, put it to your hand. It's such a powerful on common. It brings so much value. Of course, Muldrifter, my favourite non-fish fish. So Muldrifter enters the battlefield, draw two cards, you can pay the evoke or you can hard cast it for five. Forgotten Ancient works really well here with our commander building up counters. Of course, Hardened Scales and Pier also work with it. And it gains counters at a 1-1 one, one increment rather than you know getting a big lump sum. So it, it gets the full abuse right there. It acts like a battery. You can store up all these counters and start moving around wherever you want. Overgrowth Elemental, it puts a counter on another elemental when it enters. But when another creature dies, we gain a life, and if it was elemental, put a counter on the elemental itself. Well, everything's elemental on the deck pretty much, so we're good there. Thicket Crasher just gives all our elementals trample, which is great because all these elementals do get pretty fat and really chunky, so it's a good way to splash that damage over. Solar Harvest, it's elemental, it gives us draw with new entry. Green Warden of Marasa, it's just a retrieval elemental. It's a big beta too, it's a big fat butt, but it can get two cards from our graveyard, back to our hand upon entry and death. Ingot Chua, it's just an artifact. Wrecker <laughs> in an ele elemental form. A 3 3 for 5 that can kill an artifact is not the worst thing in the world, and you can just pay the vote cost if you want to. Now, into what we call the cheat clappers. These are elementals where we try and finish the game, the big boys. So, these first four can bring an army or make an army. Maelstrom Wander into the battlefield, you cascade and then cascade again. So, it's going to at least get you two other spells for free. Royal Elemental lets you steal opponents' creatures with every land you have. Veg Resendikar and Rampaging Bailoth, we've seen these before in landfall decks that are too strong. Baeloth isn't an elemental, but it's just that gotta have to include it. While Rubble Hulk and Zendikar incarnate and Motani, they are based on how many lands we control. 
So in a deck that ramps, because that's the main part, we want to get to 8 mana to draw those extra cards with a commander. These get really big real quick. And the Blood Rush mechanic on Rubble Hulk can be a bit of a blowout now and then. And Undergrowth Champion works really well for our commander and Pierre and Hard Scales, where we can start dumping counters on him, doubling up counters on him. He can become really big and become a genuine threat, and he's hard to kill for your opponent. And last up, Vigor, which can put counters on all our creatures, and again, Hard and Scales and Pierre really support it, and our commander supports this whole counter theme on the elementals. Great thing to have. So, when Omnath does enter the board, Omnath can deal damage. So I've tried to include a little bit of a reset theme here. So Dead Eye Navigator is the go-to. You can start paying two mana, spamming it, and just start burning things down. But Ghostly Flicker can be really handy to reset your commander and something else. And Conjurer's Closet just offers a nice steady reset of your commander. This way you can just be putting out a little bit more damage through your commander. Now Ramp is a key part of the deck. We want to get to eight mana so we can get that big strong draw engine online with our commander. Landfall draw card is nuts. So getting it there is important. So we do run Kadama's Reach and it's Copy Cultivate just to get basic lands out. Explosive Edges get any two basics out of your deck. We do run a Sky Shroud Claim which gets two forest cards out of your library. Now I don't run Shock Lands in this deck because I try to keep this deck a little bit more budget where I can. But we do run a couple of dual lands that have particular types to them so you can get them out. Growth Spiral, my boy said McKinnon's artwork, love it. Um, you draw a card and then you may put a land from your hand on the battlefield so it's the ramp in that sense. Farseek can get any land type out of your deck so you can either get your dual lands or just get a basic that you need. Rampant Growth only gets basic, but strength to play as well. Amina and Den are really strong in this deck. They let you play additional lands each turn, which of course on ramp decks is pretty good. But you can bounce a land back to your hand and give a creature Trample. This is good in the fact that Dwarf well, Trample we can crunch on through if we need to, but replay the lands that you bounce back. You can get more landfall, draw more cards, put more counters on thanks to your commander. It's a really good combo. Burgeoning is our budget option to exploration. It's not as good, of course I know that, but it's a one-man enchantment that lets us play additional lands when we really shouldn't be. This helps speed us up quite a bit, and it makes our opponent think, if I play these extra lands, they're going to get two as well. So into support. Um, Planeswalkers first, there are a few really good ones for this deck. Chandra the Novice Pyromancer just buffs all elementals, plus two plus zero, you can't go wrong. Um, Neg one, adding two mana can come in handy. Um, and Neg two, probably not so much. But the Flame Caller, plus one, putting two three one elementals into play, really good. Plus you can also reset our hand if we need to. Domri the Anarch of Bowlers, He's mainly here for his little buff, of course, which is handy for combat, but he ramps and stops things getting countered. Really good for a deck like us, so we don't have too much protection from counter spells. Um, we do run Zendikar's Royal, which is pretty much landfall, credit 2 to elemental token, that's great. We do run the blue and green retreats. The green one offers counter gain, which, funny enough, pair and hardened scales on a commander, we do care about counters. And the life gain if you're bleeding a little bit. Retreat to Color Helm, the blue one. Um, untapping target creatures or tapping down can be great if you're leading into combat you need to remove some blockers and scry one just to give us advantage on what we're getting. I do run a green sun zenith just to tutor out any green creature we need to. Majority of the elementals do fall into green or somehow so it's a pretty decent tutor here. We do run our two booties for better protection because our commander is very important to the deck especially for our draw engine so protecting him must have. Now removal. We don't get the goodness of white and black removal, um, we get kind of weird awkward removal. So for creatures and other permanents, I run things like Chaos Warp and Beast Within that can hit most things. Reality Shift is a cheap creature removal, sure they get a 2-2 manifested token, but that's fine. Um, Decimate is great, it hits everything, but it has to hit everything, so be careful if you have one of the permanent types, but your opponent doesn't, you've got to hit it unfortunately. Bane of Progress is great. It's a ball for artifact enchantment. It gains counters and it's elemental. It works in our deck in every way. I do run a Return to Nature for a bit of artifact enchantment hate, of course. And I run a Negate and a Swan Song for those other cards we can't deal with. We can deal with creatures pretty good on the ground. We're pretty creature heavy deck. We're pretty aggro. We can fight there pretty good. Um, Negate and Swan Song are for Planeswalkers or instant sorceries, board wipes, counter spells, just to fight that kind of stuff. Do a little bit of draw here, in addition to our commander. We don't need too much because, well, Omnath draws like a champ, but Tat Yova works really well here. Landfall, draw a card and gain a life, just furthering that engine. Urban Evolution, draw three cards and play an extra land. Seems pretty good in a deck like ours. And a Harmonize and a Brainstorm just for a bit more card value. All right, Mana Rocks, we're getting towards end now. I do run Soaring because it's commander, and I run a Mind Stone and Commander Sphere because they're nice and cheap, and later on they offer us more draw when we need it. Into lands, the utility ones first. Rectile is a must-have because of our strong draw engine. We will have a pretty big hand, so it helps to keep it. I'm loving Khan's Bastion a lot more commander decks now. The fact that just a land can offer proliferate, we do have a lot of counters across the board, 
So if you can spread it across with more creatures, then activate Khan's Bastion, you can buff your whole team even further. Kessig's Wolf Run is just a big blowout card for our deck, of course. With all the ramp, we have a lot of mana to spend. Come late game, it's a good mana sink. We do run Blighted Woodland, Evolving Wilds, and Terramorphic to help thin our deck down and have more landfall triggers without running actual fetch lands. But of course, there'd be proper upgrades. In terms of all colors in one land, Unclaimed Territory is our tribal land, works wonders. Command Tower, it's a must have in a multicolored deck. Um, the Frontier offers all three colors on the spot. And Primal Beyond has gone up a lot because of Omnath coming out, but it's an elemental tribal land. You you have to reveal an elemental from your hand and it is untapped if you do, um, but it taps any colorful elemental spells. It's pretty good. I do run our body lands and our temples. These are more of our budget option. Upgrades would be shock lands and fetch lands like I mentioned earlier, but these guys are cheap. They offer the colors that we need and a bit of scry. Can't really go wrong there. We do run Cinderglade and Thicket Shelter because they're non-shock land dual lands that have the key types that we need. So again, they're more budget friendly. Um, I'm waiting for him to print the rest of them, please, because they'll be handy for deck building. And we run 17 basics with 7 forests, 5 islands, and 5 mountains, because we need a lot of basics for well, budget, and a lot of our land retrieval refers to basics, so we need quite a few here. Alrighty, what do you think about Omnath? I think Omnath is great. It's a new iteration, Omnath gained another colour, so it's got more options, pretty much including most of the elementals. I wouldn't be surprised if Omnath goes to 5 colour next time we see Omnath. It feels like it. like. Evolving, gaining more knowledge, Omnath 5 color will be a thing. But Omnath has a very strong um, removal built in through the burning aspect of it, strong buffing based on landfall, draw based on landfall at 8 lands or more. Very strong in a format of commander, very good. Um, and the good thing is about elementals, they're pretty generic creature type. Elementals are always being printed. Um, so any set that comes out, commander, standard, modern events, there's always a chance of another good elemental being printed and offering more value to Omnath. So it's a commander that has longevity and always upgrading. So yeah, what do you think about Omnath? Let me know your thoughts down below. Um, I really enjoy Omnath. Can't wait to play with it. All right, have a good one, guys. See ya. Alrighty, it's that time of the video. We can do a bit of a shameless plug. So thank you for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, please sub and like. It really does help the channel's analytics out a lot. Maybe consider joining me on my other social platforms where you can talk about anything and everything magic related. And special thank you to our patrons. They make the channel what it is. These guys are the building blocks for Mana Down Under. They support the channel in many ways. And if you'd be interested in supporting the channel, links are down below and at the end of the video. Thank you guys.